Okay, so you have a lowered car. You wanna get the car up in the air so you can do some sort of work on it. You wanna take the wheels off, you wanna look at the brakes, do whatever, but you're too low. You can't get the jack underneath the car. What do you do? Well, that's where this video is gonna come in handy because I just purchased a brand new jack. It's a super low profile jack that's able to slide under basically any car. So it doesn't really matter how low you are, you can get underneath the car with this setup. Before this, I had to use some boards to get the car up in the air, I had race ramps after that, and it still wasn't a good system for me to get the vehicle up in the air because it still took a decent amount of time. Now you might be thinking, okay, well why don't you just raise the car? That's no fun. Life's too short to drive at stock ride height. But what I did is I purchased a new jack and it is so much easier to get underneath the vehicle. So on the car behind me, I have a set of coilovers on it. They're fully adjustable and I lowered the vehicle a little bit. Now with a standard jack, you won't be able to raise the car fully in the air. And even with the low profile jack, some of them aren't low profile enough. Especially Especially when you get into the jacks that are low profile and are strong enough to lift up a decent amount of weight, like three tons and up. Now if you have a one and a half ton jack, you can usually get by. But what I have here is an even lower two ton jack and it's going to be able to let me get any vehicle up in the air. So right here I have three different jacks. They all serve different purposes. So the one that's in the middle, the silver and blue one, is made out of aluminum. It's a three ton low profile jack and I've been using this for the past couple years. The jack that you see to the right of this is also a three ton jack, however it's made out of steel. Now they both have pretty close to the same standover height. Now the difference between both of these and the new one that I just purchased right here, the Sunex two ton one, is the fact that this is very low profile. With the design of the steel ones, you can get much further underneath the vehicle without having the jack interfere with the car. The beauty of that is that if you want to raise the car from either the differential or the subframe, you can get access to it without using ramps. So if we take a look at this jack here first, I'm going to show you the lowest height that this goes to. So if we put our measuring tape up to it, we're looking at about three and a quarter inches at the lowest height possible that this jack goes to. So if you wanted to put a car under here, it would have to be at least that height or more to get this underneath. Otherwise, you're gonna have to use some boards or any other kind of method to raise the car up in the air before you can use this jack. Taking a look at the aluminum one that I used to use before I got my new one, if we take a look at the minimum height for this thing, we're looking at three and three quarter inches. So you could use this for a slightly lowered car, but if you're on coilovers and you're really dropped, this jack will not do the trick. Now last but not least, if we take a look at our two ton super low profile jack, you can see that this comes in at two and three quarter inches. So this here is gonna be a super low jack that you can use to get under almost anything. Now if we take a look at it on the opposite side, we can also raise this to a higher height than the other jacks as well. So if we take a look at the maximum height that this jack goes, you can see that it's just a hair over two feet. Now this is going to be different for the other two jacks. The aluminum one at its highest height goes up to 19 and a quarter inches. This one here comes in at the exact same height at 19 and a quarter inches. So they're both not bad setups, but these don't quite compare to the bigger, better Sunex super low profile jack. So if we're looking at functionality, the Sunex one gets lower, it gets higher, and is a better jack than these other two ones. Now that doesn't mean that both of these are not good. Like for instance, this one here is a smaller jack than this one, so this will weigh less. And the same thing goes for the aluminum one. So this one gets pretty close to the same low height as the Sunex one, but doesn't quite get as high. But it's smaller, which is a good plus. The same kind of thing goes for the aluminum one. Because this is made out of aluminum instead of steel, this is going to be a lot easier to transport. So let's say you're going to the track or something like that, you might want to bring this one instead of this one. But if you're just planning on doing work at home, it's a no-brainer. This guy here is the way to go. So if we take a look at my cord, you'll notice that it's a little bit lower than stock. So I'm on adjustable coilovers right now, and you can see that I still have a little bit of tire gap. Now that's completely normal. Now if you adjust it so that the coilovers sit like that, that's what you're going to be left with. So as it is, it's low, but it's not super low. Now if I were to get my jack and bring this underneath the car, it barely, just ever so slightly, um, clears the bottom part of the pinch weld, and that's where you'd install it on the car. Now, the problem that I have is, though, is that when you raise up one side and you lift this side up, the other side gets lower. So you can raise one side fine, but when it comes to going to the other side to raise that side up, you can't actually fit the jack underneath it. But with the new jack that I have here, I will be able to solve that problem completely. Now what's super cool is that if you have more than one jack, you can put literally one on each end and jack the car straight up. So you don't have to lift one side and then the other to get the car raised up in the air. Even though I am promoting this tool, there are some drawbacks to this jack. 
So first off, the biggest problem that I see is the fact that it's super heavy. This thing weighs 103 pounds. So it's a pretty hefty unit. If you are gonna be hucking this thing around, you know, from shop to shop, in your car, out of the car, it is going to be pretty cumbersome. Um, so that might be one reason why you wouldn't get this jack. Now for the next thing that I don't like about this thing, I might be nitpicking a little bit, but it doesn't come with a jack pad. So what that means is that it doesn't come with something that goes in between the pad and the vehicle. So you can purchase a hockey puck, you can purchase a polyurethane pad like this that's meant for jacking up vehicles, um, or you can find something else online. Now it's a five, ten dollar option at most, uh, but it is something that doesn't come with it. Now other than that, the price of it is pretty good, the size of it is pretty good, and it's very useful. Now if you're gonna be using this for bigger stuff like trucks or stuff like that, this might not be the jack that you want because it only has a rating of two tons. So if you're working on some really big heavy duty stuff, um, it might not be the jack you're looking for. But if you're working with a car, keep in mind, if you're jacking up one side at a time, let's say your car weighs 4,000 pounds, you're only gonna be putting 2,000 pounds on one side of it. So basically how much weight you're gonna be putting on it. Now if you guys wanna pick up one of these tools for yourselves, there's gonna be a link in the description box along with some other links to pads like this should you guys wanna pick one up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I have a new Tool Tuesday video out every single week. So be sure to be subscribed. Thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.